everyone, I hope you're all well. It's Friday. Um, I am doing a vlog today about measurement of success. It's really important that we measure success on a lean journey, I feel. Um, and it's certainly been a massive part of my um, journey is setting goals and then understanding how well I've been performing against those goals in the same way as we would do at work. So there are a few measures of success, I guess, on a lean journey. And if we move away from the fitness side of things and focus on body shape, um, the first thing that a lot of us would turn to would be these, the scales, or as Mr. Wicks likes to call them, the sad step. And it is a sad step. I was wedded to this. I think I used to spend more time with this than I did with my husband at certain points in my life. Um, and this would govern the way that I felt, my mood, if I got it on, on it in the morning and I'd put a few pounds on, I'd be in a bad mood. I'd then stand on it at lunchtime, I'd then stand on it in the evening. And by the evening, I might have put another pound on and it just gets ridiculous. And I think if you have a lot of weight to lose, then this is probably an okay indicator of your success to start with in the early days. But the critical thing is, and I've learned this the hard way, is not to stand on it every day. You know, when you're on a lean journey, you're doing something like the body coach or training gain or sustain or one of those types of plans. They don't work in the same way as Weight Watchers or Slimming World or, you know, Cambridge or Lighter Life or any of those types of things you don't necessarily see the weight drop off in the early weeks. In fact, when I did the body coach for the first time in cycle one, I didn't actually lose any weight until the final three days. And all of a sudden I lost about nine pounds. And that was in a month, the final three days of a month. And it all came off at once. And I kept standing on this and getting disheartened. So if you run the early days, of a weight loss journey with a lot of weight to lose, use this as your yardstick, but only on a monthly basis. If you're like me now, where I'm really happy with where I am, I hardly ever stand on this, because there's no point. It's not, it's not a good indicator for me. I think the other thing that isn't a great indicator, and, and I was getting a bit sort of obsessed with it, I suppose, is um, clothing size. And the reason I say this is because today I can fit into this dress, which is a size eight. I can fit into this dress, which is a size 10. I can fit into this dress, which is a size 12. And I bought this dress this week and it's from Warehouse and it's a size 14. And I couldn't fasten the size 12 um, over my boobs because my boobs are too big so I've had to buy a size 14 and I'm having to have the hips of this dress taken in so dress size isn't really an indicator as to how well we're doing because depends on what shop you go to depends what size you have to wear but I find what is good is if you have an item of clothing two items of clothing one that you used to fit in and you can try on every week and see how much bigger it's getting and that's brilliant when you've lost loads of weight because you can try on something that's maybe a size 20 or a size 22 when you're a size 16 and you feel fabulous so that's good the other great indicator is a pair of jeans or a skirt that's too small that you can keep trying on and seeing how much closer you are to fitting into it. That's really motivating, I find. Tape measure is an okay indicator, and the key thing here is to make sure that you measure the same thing every time. Um, good tip that I've got for measuring thighs is that if you stand with your hands by your side, the point where your longest fi finger touches on your thigh is the bit that I measure so that you can get the same point every time because your thighs are different all the way up and down. Um, you know, try and measure 
maybe over your belly button on your waist or whichever point you choose. Um, I always do it under the boobs. Um, and this is great, again, if you've got a lot of weight to lose, the inch loss is really motivating. But when you get to my size and you're happy with where you are, you don't really lose inches. So again, at this stage, it's not a great indicator of success for me. So I think the ultimate one is this, the phone or the, the camera within the phone. And if you can take a photograph standing in exactly the same position, you know, so whether you've got your arms up or your arms down by your side or however you wish to stand, make sure you do it the same each time. Stand with one facing forward, one facing sideways, one facing backwards and take that every month. You can see the dead. You need to be in your underwear as well <laughs> um, or a bikini. Um, take that and you can see the definition building, you can see how your shape's changing and it really is, I think, the best indicator of success regardless of your size, regardless of how much weight you've got to lose or not lose because it shows you all the little things that you've done. What else is great to do is, you know, a flexed arm, a flexed leg, um, because then you can compare how your biceps are coming on month on month as well and maybe one of your back when you're flexing. So I guess they're my top tips for measuring success. Scales, no, 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 you don't need those. The ultimate one is the camera. It might make you cry the first time you take it, it certainly did with me. Every month after that, I had the biggest smile on my face seeing my progress and still do now. And I'm getting ready on Sunday to take my photo again because I'm going to start Joe's SAS plan um, on Sunday and I can't wait. So on that note, go and enjoy Friday evening and I will speak to you again. Mwah.